This woman, I don't know her. I never met her. It's better than what we're doing right now because we're spending money like drunken sailors. So You're going to have millions of people pouring into our country right now at a level that nobody's ever seen before. I would like for you to answer the question. Okay, it's very simple to answer. That's why I asked it. It's very simple to You're a nasty person. Welcome back to John Bachman now and former President Donald Trump didn't hold back last night during that town hall in New Hampshire. He called out President Biden on the border on Ukraine and also on inflation and the crowd really enjoyed it. You could hear a lot of cheering during this town hall. But if you ask CNN, well, here's how they say things went last night. Look at this tweet here. The former president repeated election lies, wouldn't say if he wants Ukraine to win the war and was asked about a federal abortion ban and the debt limit. Well, uh, of course, media bias on full display, but the president quickly took to Truth Social afterwards last night. He thanked the audience. He called it amazing. And, you know, folks, uh, the bottom line is CNN's panelists after seemed more upset that the uh, network gave him any time. But he is the leading candidate for the GOP, according to the polls here. And this is what voters uh, had to say about his performance last night. Take a listen. As you guys asked him the first question at the town hall about the 2020 election rather than current stuff. So don't you think he could say it's time for me to start talking about 2024 and not lies that aren't true? Couldn't the media ask him a question about 2024? Well, there were questions, but you're right. That was the first thing, but that's something that was on our mind. And that's why I was asked first. I don't think anybody wants to hear about 2020 at this point. Everybody wants to hear about 2024, the future, and what comes after that. And he did not talk enough about that tonight. Oh, they got him. Let's welcome in political analyst Mark Halpern for more of a discussion on this. Also with us, Brianna Lyman. She's a reporter at The Daily Caller and host of The Facts. Great to have you both with us. Thanks so much. Good afternoon. All right, Mark. So we were together when this whole exercise began, uh, and then we went our separate ways to watch the end. Uh, give us your take on how this went for Donald Trump. Well, by every metric you can you could cite, I think it went very well for him. His team's very pleased. I'll say two things that, that I haven't heard much discussed uh, that I think are pretty important and, and speak to how well he did. First of all, town hall meeting, I don't, I don't have an exact count, but a very large percentage of the questioning was done not by citizens of New Hampshire, but by a CNN journalist. Uh, that doesn't seem like it's a town hall. Uh, and then second, um, you know, the, the uh, you saw the clip there where the, the voters like, why didn't he talk more about 2024? Well. Kaylin Collins chose to talk about <laughs> abortion. She chose to talk about January 6th. She chose to talk about 2020. It's possible Donald Trump could have pivoted and said, people don't care about that, but he chose to answer the question. So I think if the voters have a complaint about the topics, for the most part, their complaint is not with Donald Trump, but it's with Kaylin Collins. Yeah, it was one of those cell phone moments for CNN, I think, Brianna, when you know anyone of average intelligence could answer that question. It was a great job by that uh, a uh, member of that uh, panel there. Let's also focus, too, on Caitlin Collins and the topics that she had. Some of the highlights, he vowed to pardon many people on January 6th. I also thought, Brianna, it was important when he pulled that piece of paper out and read his comments from January 5th. And I think that's one of the reasons why so many liberals were concerned about this, because it actually gave Donald Trump a chance to get his side of that out there. Um, and then also take a listen to, uh, to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She was on MSNBC last night, the perfect place for her to complain about CNN. Here she is. Uh, you know, I, I know you said earlier that you will not comment on the platforming of um, such atrocious disinformation, but I, I would. I think it was a profoundly irresponsible decision. I don't think that it would, I would be doing my job if I did not say that. Um, and what we saw tonight was a series of extremely irresponsible decisions that put a sexual abuse victim at risk, that put that person at risk in front of a national audience, and I could not have disagreed with it more. It was shameful. Did she just say the quiet part out loud, Brianna, that her job as a member of Congress is to silence a political opponent? I mean, that's kind of what she was referencing there. Yeah, stifling free speech is the top priority that she has. And she says it's, you know, profoundly inappropriate, but let's be clear, there is nothing inappropriate about a major platform like CNN giving the leading Republican candidate a chance to speak directly to the voters, which he hasn't been able to do because he had big tech silencing him for the past few years, right? So this was his opportunity. And she has some audacity to talk about threatening and putting E. Jean Carroll in a position of threat when she is calling for the arrest 
of Marine, who hasn't even been charged because authorities are still investigating. So she should keep her mouth shut on that one. And I just want to bring it back. You know, you mentioned Donald Trump pulling out that no card. And I think you made a great point. This was an opportunity for Donald Trump to defend himself and to have pushback from a liberal like Caitlin Collins. And he did exceptionally well. He also answered questions on Ukraine. He said, I am for people. I support people not dying anymore, right? He didn't say which side he supports. And that yeah. is the kind of policy that Americans want. We want to be out of this now. And you have Republicans and Democrats who are just funneling money to Ukraine. So it's refreshing to hear that. Yeah, no, that was an interesting point, too, because I think it's very consistent with what Donald Trump has done in the past, his refusal to criticize uh, Vladimir Putin publicly because, you know, he has to negotiate him with behind closed doors. And just look at the track record. You know, Vladimir Putin did not invade Ukraine when Donald Trump was president, so they could just go there. But to that point, Mark, it did seem like there was a predetermined narrative based on the questions that were asked by Caitlin Collins, uh, things like that, going back to the Russian collusion narrative, going back to 2020. And those were all, that was all at the bidding of CNN. That was their narrative that they chose to pursue. Well, Ben Shapiro made a really good point on Twitter and said, these aren't CNN billed this as, you know, part of the first in their series of Republican town halls, Republican presidential candidates town halls. These aren't the topics Republican presidential candidates want to talk about. They want to talk about the economy, crime, uh, inflation, uh, uh, economic growth, you know, lots of issues, immigration. And so CNN chose to spend a lot of this town hall because it wasn't calling on citizens. It was the anchors uh, questions on topics that, you know, are, I don't know if they if they plan to ask Republicans about these, but these are not top of mind for Republican voters. They're top of mind for Democrats. No, they're not. And right. And that, that's my next question. You know, is there going to be the reciprocation for, for Joe Biden? Is he going to do one of these town halls and face some of the same types of questions? And we know the answer, Brianna, it's not going to happen. It's not. Could you imagine Joe Biden sitting for an hour with Fox News? He would never do it. I mean, this is a man who in 2021 had six press conferences, in 2022, five, and in 2023, zero. This is a man who walks away when reporters ask questions. So I think it does go to show you, you know, Joe Biden ran a campaign from his basement, from when he went outside, there was what, five squares and people could sit in a square. He could not draw crowds and likely because people knew he had nothing to say. Whereas Donald Trump, you know, we remember what he did to Hillary Clinton in 2016. If you see Joe Biden and Donald Trump on the stage, and Donald Trump has far more ammunition this time around because of all the bad things that Joe Biden has done, he's going to absolutely slaughter him. Yeah, talk about the record. That's what Joe. That's what, that's what Donald Trump wants to do. CNN obviously had a different objective there. Great to see you both, Mark Halpern, Brianna Lyman. Thank you guys for being here. Good to see you both.